so we're going to we're going to be doing Wednesdays for a bit and um, and there it is. <laughs> so my name is Kelly Kaladi and these are free calls on Wednesday nights at eight o'clock where I bring in the angel Raphael and sometimes we do activations and sometimes we do Q and A's or healing meditations, but tonight is a Q and A. So we sent out an email and we got hundreds of beautiful questions. And so we're gonna start to go through them um, and answer them. So the way that I channel is I close my eyes, um, um, my hands kind of move. I make some toning sounds. The angel Raphael comes in and says, hello. And then normally if we're in an audience and you guys are all live and we're not on Zoom, you all say hello back and the energy gets going. Um, but for these purposes, my son is here and he will say hello to Raphael and that's how the energy connects. And then Raphael will come in with probably a short message and we'll get down to the questions. This is recorded, so yeah, I'll send out a replay. Um, and I think that that's kind of the, that's about it. I know there may be some new people in the call, but I hope that's enough info to let you know what's going on. In terms of announcements, uh, Starseed Masterclass 1, I will be doing again in the fall. So all of my beautiful Starseeds who already took the class, um, if you want to share that amazing experiences you had with your friends or anyone else who'd like to join, it begins September 11th and early registration is now. And then Starseed 2 will happen in October. And I'm headed out to Mount Shasta with Casey um, in August. And anybody who's out there who's already taken the course, uh, we can connect up on the mountain and tune in to the energy. And I'll be keeping all of you guys updated with um, what we get and what's happening so you're informed. Okay. All right. So I guess it's just time to get going. I'm going to bring in Raphael and see see what happens. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, thank you guys for your donations for these calls. If you feel like donating, it is very much appreciated. All right, let's all take a nice deep breath. Mm. And just let go of any stuff that no longer is serving us. Just let it go out with the breath. And imagine yourself just dropping down and grounding into Mother Earth and getting centered as we tune in to the vibration of the angel Raphael. It is as always, we are delighted from the angelic ground to be here and to talk to all of you this evening. And it is that we're wanting to remind you that when it is that we are saying we is because we are working with a collective energy of light and that this energy is here to love and to support you and to remind you of who it is that you are. And we know that from our perspective in the angelic realm, it is not easy for us to fully remember and relate to the energies in which you are experiencing here in your courageous descent into form and matter. 
and yet uh, we are doing our best to calibrate to the energetic field and the vibration which you are experiencing in this moment in time to assist you in elevating it to a place in which you are expanding your heart center and feeling more energy of serenity and peace and bliss and synchronicity and joy. And so with that, we are understanding that there are things in which you're wanting to talk to us in the angelic realm about. And so we are here to do exactly that. And so what is it? Hi, Raphael. So we're just going to run through uh, some of these questions that everybody has. And so the first one is, can you explain in depth uh, the trust we should have in the universe? Um, there, this individual is about to walk away from their family of origin and they're looking for an understanding of the unknown. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, well it, what exactly is the question exactly that they are asking? I, well, I think that they're asking how fully should we trust in the universe? So where is that balance of trusting in the universe versus trusting ourselves? Uh -huh. well, well, they aren't separate. Mm -hmm. They, of course, are, are the same for you are the universe and the universe is you. And when you're trusting fully and completely and absolutely in the universe, you're, you're trusting in yourself. And, and, and so you really cannot separate them. And yet in the understanding of the perspective of where it is that you are here in the human form, you identify yourself as separate from the universe. Sometimes when you think of the universe, well, perhaps what is that word to all of you? The universe is what some stars in the galaxy out in the distance in the sky. What is the universe? When one says, do I trust in the universe? Are you trusting in an empty space? What, what is the definition there of, of the universe? Uh, if you're talking about the, the universe that resides and is the micro macrocosm of the reflection of what is within, then ultimately you're trusting in yourself. And yet in your teachings that many of you share and, and talk about, there is this uh, wording that you have that I am trusting in the universe, uh, which is truly a, a willingness to surrender to the higher aspect of who you are which is ultimately yourself. So you're trusting in yourself. Uh, and, and so it, it's really about a willingness to know that everything is moving toward and for your best interest, even when outside appearances for a moment in time may not appear that way, nor can you perhaps see it from that perspective. It is always ushering in and moving you forward to the elevation of a higher frequency. Even that in which you might label as negative. And so in this particular being, and what she is asking is, should she trust herself in that there is a deep knowing that her family, as I understand the question, perhaps of origin, is no longer bringing her a sense of joy. It is no longer bringing her peace. It is only bringing anguish. And that there is a deep knowing and intuitive understanding within herself that she is needing to create space from this family of origin and to express and explore who it is that she is and to come into her full capacity and the power of, of self. And, and that requires a willingness to be correct Courageous and a deep knowing to trust the intuitive sense that resides within and to follow one's heart. But of course, sometimes that can be frightening because it is scary to follow one's heart sometimes when it is not necessarily in alignment with what you have known in the past to be and that is comfortable. So you know, surrendering and trusting the universe sometimes is a willingness to move out of one's comfort zone and to follow one's heart into the unknown with a, a knowing that the universe, meaning yourself, will provide and is capable of bringing forth whatever it is that you're needing. And it is in the knowing and in the trusting of that, of course it is. It is only in the doubt of that, that it will not do what that in which you are wanting it to do. And, and so it really truly comes down to perhaps a word many of you um, relate to would be faith. Um, and, and the faith is in the universe, but it is in the larger aspect of all that is, which is self. 
So I guess in terms of this question, both the things that we can and can't control in this dimension are things that we should have faith in that are working in our best interest always because they are ourselves. Yes, it, it is all connected. There is no separateness, only in the illusion of the perspective of the reality in which you reside in at this time. And that perspective of separation is beginning to crumble as we speak. And that's why so many of you are finding yourselves feeling a deep sense of being out of balance, because it is that which was holding or gluing the idea of the illusion of reality that you have all agreed upon for a long period of time time is beginning to dismantle itself and in doing so it's like you were moving along and you had this grip on you and, and you were so comfortable in the grip that it, and it, because it was so familiar that you didn't even realize how tight it was and now you are starting to step into your sovereignty and your power and your opening uh, that fist you're opening into awakening into who you are and the grip is is beginning to loosen until it fully comes off in your fully awakened state um, and so that is collectively what you're all experiencing and it requires a willingness to know that as the grip is coming off and as you're awakening it can feel that you're stretching you're expanding you're growing and you might even be moving into what many of you might call a shadow aspect and a willingness to to release parts of self that have been controlled and, and that were being held down and and so in doing that there is a trusting that needs to take place so the the courageous act of something that might appear on the, from an outside perspective from another to leave a family of origin is that is something that would be labeled or judged as negative in the, the breaking down of the paradigm of what one should do, but instead following what one knows is best from their intuitive sense, opening up to that is releasing the grip of the collective idea of what should be. And in that, it is a breaking through. And in the breaking through the process, it sometimes can feel uncomfortable, but in the uncomfortableness, the awakening occurs. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Raphael. Thank you. So the next question in terms of like trusting and having faith in yourself, this person asks, to succeed in an exam to get a job, is it necessarily only studying? Does manifestation work? How can I pass this exam after four failures? Oh, let, let's take each sentence. Begin with the first sentence. To succeed in an exam to get a job. Oh, that is quite funny right there, right? Yeah, right. To, to, to succeed in exam to get a job. So you're, we're talking about the collective ideas uh, or paradigm that is losing its grip, uh, which has programmed you, not you directly, but the collective that in order to get a job, you have to follow certain sequences, including taking exams and that you have to succeed in to for the parameters of what another may tell you is correct in order to be valued enough in order to receive this particular job in order to receive dollars in order to feel safe but as the collective paradigm is shifting the safety is not residing any longer in the the idea the sequence of how things should be outside of self but the safety resides within and and so what is the second part of the question does manifestation work? Well, yes, of course it works. <laughs> it, it, it's working all the time, regardless of whether you are consciously aware of it working and it, it, you're doing it from an unconscious point of view or a conscious point of view, but it's always working. You're always creating and manifesting 100% of the time. Now, you might be consciously manifesting or you may be unconsciously manifesting, meaning that you are unaware of your belief systems, your thought patterns, what you're projecting into your experience, what you're saying over and over to yourself, what you believe in the depth of your being is to be true. But whatever that is, whatever your thoughts, whatever your actions, whatever your perception, whatever your beliefs, whatever, whether, are always manifesting. So of course, manifestation is real. 
Now, in terms of manifesting the desired outcome in which you are wanting requires uh, taking a, a deep look uh, at what perhaps unconsciously you are putting out into what you might label the universe or what we would perhaps rather label as the, the energetic holographic field that is mirroring and projecting back to you in this dimension your experience, uh, depending upon uh, those factors in which we just spoke of. And so manifestation is real. And as you hone in on it, as you give it attention, as you pay attention to it, as you learn it like any skill and you begin to do it with a conscious awareness, then you become the driver of it rather than the unconscious ego mind being the driver of it. And it begins to mirror and reflect that in which you, you're desiring. And so... The last part of the question is, how can I pass this exam after four failures? Is that manifesting more failure? Well, well, yes. Perhaps there is a, an underlying part of self that doesn't want to pass the exam. We can tell from the energetic blueprint of this being that they have the um, wherewithal and the intelligence to pass this exam without a problem. But uh, perhaps if you don't pass the exam, then perhaps you can't get the job that maybe you think you want, but actually maybe you don't want. Perhaps there is something that you are expanding into that you are really wanting to do, but you don't have permission to do it from society or parents or outside influences. So you feel trapped in uh, doing things in a certain way and taking a certain exam to get a certain job so that you can be accepted. And part of you is rejecting that or rebelling against it on a deep unconscious level that may not be conscious, so which means means you are forcing yourself to continuously fail so that uh, you have an opportunity and an excuse to open a pathway to do something new. And, and so you're manifesting the failing of the exam. Now you can begin to, uh, to look and reflect upon that. Well, well perhaps uh, really when I deeply look at it, I do want to pass the exam. I'm excited about this job. I'm extraordinarily grateful. It is my life mission. It is what I want to do from the depth of my heart. Then of course you can manifest creating and passing the exam. And, and so what you really have to look at is what the exam means to you, what the end result is. And if that truly is an alignment with who it is that you are. And then if you're wanting to manifest it, no problem. It's a snap of a finger. Yeah. So the next question is, does emotional pain disappear when we die? Uh, well, it, it uh, in a sense, it does uh, in that uh, the chatter of the mind disappears. Um, and the chatter of the mind uh, is equivalent to 90% of your emotional pain because you are emotionally creating pain through uh, a fear of uh, the future or worrying about the past or whatever those things might be and where you're not present. But you see, once you leave the physical body, you leave linear time in the expansion of nothingness where all time is occurring simultaneously. There is no timeline in the way that you're experiencing here. And so you're, you are always in the presence of the now, in which case uh, the chatter of the mind is gone, which dictates most of your emotional pain. And so the emotional pain that you're experiencing in this now moment is not there. However, you are continuously working, growing, shifting, changing, and evolving. And there are periods of time right after death and when many beings are what we call incubated, meaning they're in a, a quiet time where they're cocooned and they are integrating energies and they are reflecting upon their experience. And during that process, and not so much that there's anguish or emotional pain, but there is a review and sometimes a desire to begin to grow uh, through uh, evolving again in another human experience in which there is those things in which we're not processed need to be processed again in another way. 
And so it is not as simple as a yes or no answer. And it is not that if you experience extreme emotional pain, that uh, leaving the body itself is the solution because you are experiencing it in a different way. You're evolving after death and beginning to process in other ways. And so it is not necessarily an exit strategy from emotional pain. However, it is not the type of same type of emotional pain that you have here in the third dimension. Thank you, Raphael. Um, so, I'm, so here's the next question. I know fear is a vibration that blocks our ability to hold the vibration of love, peace, and trust. So how do we feel afraid when we see so much? How do we not feel afraid when we see so much anger, manipulation, control, uncertainty, mistrust, lack of truth, um, and we have no idea what horrible thing will happen next. How do I know if my light and love will be strong enough if this if things <coughs> get really scary? Well, there's a lot of ifs there. <laughs> <laughs> if things get scary, and are there, you're projecting that they will be scary, and all of these things that you're saying now of mistrust and, and all of these things, are they directed directly toward you or are they some information that's being projected at you that you are feeding into to be true? Is it in your experience in this now moment? Are you being manipulated right now? And if so, by who? Or is that true? And how do you know that that is true? And is that a belief that you have tapped into and hooked into, into your vibrational field and decided it is true? Or is it true? And if it is true, what is the evidence that it is true in this now moment? And how is it affecting you? And how is it that you are playing your part in that or succumbing to it as the master creator of your experience and the owner of your reality and the driver of, your, of, of this lifetime? And, and so are you deciding in this now moment that things are going to get scary or that they are scary or everything is horrible? And, and where are you seeing this? Is it in your everyday human experience, every moment of what you're doing? Is it being mirrored to you? And if so, then where is that within you that you are seeking to resolve it and to heal it inside? Because there, there is a lot of, uh, perhaps we, we think of, uh, mm, of, of this one for a moment, Kelly, in the vehicle which we were speaking through. And she had this grandmother who died a very long time ago. And the grandmother lived the, in, in this place. And she walked every day back and forth through her little town to go to church. And, and she had her picnic lunches. And she sat and watched her show with her, her husband. And her life was quite simple. And yet... She was completely and absolutely riddled with fear that she would be robbed or that she would be raped or that something would happen to something or that the world would end or something scary was going to occur. And, and it, it riddled her to a point that she became paralyzed in her experience. But yet when you ask her, she lived to be over 100 years old, did, did anyone ever steal anything from you? Well, no. Did anyone ever rape you? Well, no. Did anyone ever hurt you? Well, well, no. Did, 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 and you begin to look at that the where was the fear arising from? Now, we're not saying that all of you have had many horrific experiences, but it is that many have had experiences that are horrific and yet they do not live in fear. And others have had a very pampered life and are riddled with fear because the fear itself is the mind. Oh. It, it, it is the worrying of something that's going to occur that hasn't already occurred, that may or may not occur. And in that riddledness of fear, you begin to vibrate with it until it starts to keep showing up everywhere in your experience. And before you know it, you're mirroring back that reality. And yet that's all it is. It is an illusion. of a, 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 And then we know it's hard to fully grasp that. But where you put your energy, your focus, and your attention becomes your experience. And you've all heard that a million times. You all know that. And yet it's easy to get caught in the spiral drama of uh, what could happen that has not happened. That in the worrying that it could happen means that it will happen. 
Yeah, a lot of ifs. And so the question, the next question is, um, this person writes, I sense that there is a benefit to be aware of what is happening in the world, yet that awareness can also be detrimental when it leads to a drop in one's vibrational offering. How can we be informed about this world utilizing the contrast to increase momentum and not get caught up in the negativity? Oh, that's exactly a perfect sequence in questioning. Because it, it is, it, yes, you want to have an awareness of perhaps what's happening outside of your, your little perspective to know, to know what it is in order to create momentum for change. But having a, an observing awareness without getting caught in the vibration of it and elevating it. It's just like a, when you're with someone and one person is filled with joy and up and happy and laughing and telling stories and another comes into the room who is down and depressed and having a hard day or filled with anger and is uh, about to fall apart. Uh, either it is that the, the one holding the high vibration can begin to elevate the one with the lower vibration and bring some joy and laughter and levity to the situation or the one holding the high vibration can begin to match the one who is feeling down and all of a sudden their energy drops. And so it is a practicing of elevating and holding your vibration. And then when you're tuning into information of a lower frequency, you're tuning into it with a, a conscious awareness and intent to know it for information and knowledge that you can utilize in order to make change. And if you cannot take the information that you are gathering and in order to make concrete and active changes, then do not listen to it at all. Because just knowing it without having an awareness to move momentum toward a shift in it, even if it is a, a minor shift, is not supportive in raising the consciousness or, or alleviating that pain that is there. So awareness uh, needs to be utilized for an active movement towards something that elevates it to the frequency that you are holding that is higher than that in which you are tuning into. And so rather than perhaps tuning in to a news cycle that is repetitive around and around and around, and then listening to it every day, you choose once a month to tune into it, knowing that you bring up a bubble of light around you and that you are going in with pen and paper to take notes of the, the, the conscious consensus of what the collective thinks reality is in this now moment, or events that may be transpiring in which you can perhaps uh, have an active role in supporting a change around. And then you look at it, you listen to it, you take a note and you say, oh, I, I can see as a loving witness, these things that are occurring. Is there any of these in which I can have a conscious uh, plan to, to affect in some positive way? Can I contribute money to it? Or can I make a phone call? Or can I get involved in it? Or can I carry a sign about it or is it that there isn't really anything that I can do about that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send enormous love to that area and sit in meditation and then you're going to disconnect from it you can't keep tuning in and connecting and connecting to it because you're all so powerful and you're manifesting so fast and so quickly that the more you're tuning into it the more you're amplifying it and the bigger it is getting and, and so, yes, it is a balancing of awareness, but it, it, it's about 90% holding your vibration, staying in a high frequency and about 10% tuning into the, the collective and then choosing what to do about it. Thank you, Raphael. I think that was very helpful. And so today we wanted to focus on staying centered in times of chaos. And I know that people feel that the global political situation is pretty crazy. It, but somebody was also asking um, if you could speak on the energies coming in around the solstice. Uh -huh. well, well, there's so much energy coming onto the planet. And it's bombarding from an energetic perspective and it's crumbling and breaking down a matrix. And perhaps we, we showed you the gripping. There was a grip uh, uh, around the planet in a collective way of perceiving the world. 
and it is dismantling itself. And so the solstice energies and the eclipse energies and all of these energies that are coming in at a fast pace, bombarding from an astrological standpoint onto the planet, uh, are penetrating this field of this grippling or energy. And uh, as they're going in, they're starting to unweave it, untangle it. It's like taking it, um, tying a shoe very tight into a knot and you're, you're slowly pulling the pieces out. And the energy that's bombarding and coming in is loosening all of that. And as it's loosening, it's creating, in a sense, more space. And as it creates more space, you're beginning to feel more light coming out. You're able to emanate more of your light because it's not being shut down. And as you're emanating more of it, it's starting to tune in and connect to all those around you. And you're becoming more and more sensitive. That's why so many beings are sensitive to their food, to light, to sound, to one another, because you are, you're exiting the confined aspect of the physicality of the 3D form. And you're expanding your auric field and you're widening it. And in widening it, you haven't really learned yet how to navigate it it's like a child learning how to ride a bike and we've teared your training wheels are being taken off and you're trying to get your balance so you're not feeling that grounded because your energy sometimes is now seeping into each other's energies and as that's happening you're kind of in a soup of energies and you're not really sure how to navigate yourself and you feel a little off balance and, and so these energies coming in are contributing to your feeling off balance, but they're also super supportive and needed because they are loosening the grip of a way of being that is dismantling, that is shattering, that is crumbling before your eyes as you are expanding into higher light frequencies. And in doing so, you are going to move at a rapid pace into a whole new perception and way of being. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> yes, but it happens from where you are in these increments that you cannot see in your daily experience, but it's not until you look back at five years or 10 and you see how different the world is and how different your conversations are, how different your friendships are, how different your relationships are, how different the way that you perceive and see things, how you think and create, how your perspective on things are. And so when you begin to look at where you are now from where you are in linear time, not that long past, you can see the rapid changes that are occurring in yourself, those around you and those you love, in that the fear that held them in how things should be, and you were told you had to do things, is falling apart, just like your original question about the exam. It is that uh, the structures that were put in place to for you to follow rules uh, uh, by a collective consciousness that that kept you in a sense held under their thumb, the thumb is lifting up the, the, and the, the solar energies and the flares and the uh, eclipses and the uh, solstice energy and all of this is uh, supporting that process. And so you'll see that the things that were so uncomfortable, so known, so expected uh, in society that one should or must do, the, and that you are very judged if you do not follow the sequence of the rules of taking the exam and, and going to school and following all the things that you are supposed to in a certain way and taking your SATs and going to college and having your resume and getting a good job and buying a house and getting a station wagon and getting a dog and having your children, all of those things that then were the things you were supposed to do and that they were judged that if you were moving way out of sequence in that, that somehow you were not fitting into the idea of the collective way that things should be is changing. And so that there's more space for spirit. There's more space for creativity. There's more space for moving outside of the box because the lines are crumbling. The, the paradigm of how things should be is ex opening. 
And in the opening, you see that there's more acceptance of different ways of living, different ways of experiencing, different ways of working, different ways of loving, different ways of, of living. And that there is not just one way that is the, the good way. And in doing that, the spirit's opening up and freedom is happening. You're feeling more freedom. And the idea of judgment, when you hear, oh, well, blah, 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 did this. And now they're only doing that. And the judgment begins to dissipate in that they are on their journey. And whatever that is, is divinely perfect for them in their human experience. And it doesn't always have to fall in line with the shoulds of what we all have thought that was projected onto of what should be any longer and so a lot of people are always curious and i don't know if you know the answer to this but are these changes going to integrate with inside of you know the lifetime of say kelly Ah, oh well they they might in kelly's lifetime meaning her life huh? or they may not, but it's not the same timeline the way you're thinking of it because it's a, it, it, your individual experience is becoming more projected, dependent upon your consciousness is your reality. So her reality may be that, and yet another's reality may be completely caught in the grip of the old paradigm and during the same physical time. And so the time itself won't matter at all anymore because there are infinite timelines occurring and your experience is a direct reflection of, the, of your conscious awareness. So it, it is dependent upon you. It is not that all of you will experience it simultaneously. And so in this lifetime, there are many beings who have all, are already fully experiencing the fifth dimensional frequency and are living in what might be perceived as heaven on earth. There are those that are on the cusp of that, meaning that when you look at their human experience, so much of it is filled with joy. So many things are aligned and in place and moving with grace and ease, grace and ease. And it is not that they do not have to struggle and push and, and, and keep climbing up all the time to get through things and then, then and then there's all different levels uh, of, of those sequences occurring continuously all the time infinitely so it is dependent upon the reflection of your own consciousness oh okay so that's very interesting so um then we have a couple questions about healing in terms of also connecting one person was asking, what is the best way to connect with you when they're trying to um, heal people and calm their mind and are in an environment that may be of a chaotic nature? Should they pray in a specific way or say something to ask for divine help or guidance? Uh, it is helpful prior to going into the chaotic energetic field to sit with intention, to ground, to open your crown, to invite my energy in, to call and summon upon me as I shall come and can only come when invited. And then I can utilize and integrate with your energetic field and physicality of body of laying on hands on another who is needing the support of healing within the body. And so in terms of healing, um, one of somebody who has who is diagnosed with breast cancer um, just had their tumor removed and is currently waiting for their results in their body. And needless to say, as soon as they find, <clears throat> needless to say, uh, they want to get rid of the pain as soon as possible. And they're working with the patterns that cause the disease and are trying to visualize that they are healthy and strong. They want to find a way to manifest great health and at the same time be okay with whatever the outcome is. Do you have any tips to activate every cell in their body to heal at the same time being op open to that an aggravated disease process might serve my growth better? Oh, well, it is very important for them to choose what it is that they are wanting because uh, they're already in deep conflict here. 
Part of the last sentence shows that the unconscious mind is recognizing that they may need or have chosen to go through more suffering in order to grow. However, that is not some, a timeline that they have to align with. They can align with uh, choosing a miraculous, instantaneous, and complete remission and healing in this now moment. Um, so it's very important to get clarity and sometimes the clarity is that it is a choice. And we're not saying that in this particular instance. Sometimes it, there is a choice to choose to go through uh, a, a more difficult process, knowing that that is how the soul will really move, grow, and evolve. But the soul can also move, grow, and evolve with a, a deep willingness to choose spontaneous, instant, miraculous healing on every cellular level. And so we would suggest and advise for them to, to really deeply go within and, and to write and to get some time and to be alone and to be in nature and to contemplate what it is they are wanting, knowing they are the master creator of their experience. Go deep into the unconscious, look at what it is that they are getting out of this process, how it is serving them and what it is that they are wanting to experience with and through it. Yeah, that, thank you, Raphael. And I, I just wanna reread one part of their question that I might've messed up as I was reading it to you, trying to change the tense, but they wrote, I find it hard to try to manifest great health and at the same time be okay with whatever the outcome that serves me is best. Yes, well, well, that's something many of you get about confusing. Because you see in them saying that they're having a hard time about creating perfect health and at the same time trusting whatever is best means that somewhere in their unconscious there is a thought that they are a fear, a thought and a fear that they won't be well, and that that gives them permission to, to know that that was for the best outcome. Mm. You see, and, yeah. and, and so what is needed here is for them to, to gain deep clarity because the body only knows what the story that you're telling it. <laughs> It doesn't know the difference between what is true and what you're telling it it is true. It is only resonating with the frequency that you're projecting toward it. And so it is very important to make a conscious choice of what story you want to tell it. Thank you, Raphael. Thank you. And, and on that same subject, we get a lot of questions. And, and here's another question that just came in. Could you please ask Raphael, what's the worst we need to be prepared for regarding the political game? <laughs> do not be prepared for anything terrible why would you prepare for the worst then you are creating the worst you can't be in preparation for something that's that unless you believe that it will be on some level and what is the worst what what is the worst outcome that you die so what <laughs> You're all going to die, right? You're all going to, to leave the physical body and, and to move into other realms and continue because you're an infinite being of light. So what is the worst outcome? And, and so preparing uh, for the worst is uh, creating the worst. And you're all so powerful. And you're all creating so quickly, so fast as the energies are moving so rapidly. And, and, and so what we've noticed is that the fear that many have within that they are not able to or wanting to really look at, they attach to something outside of themselves that's going to get them or that is after them or is doing something to them or is forcing them in something. And they listen to a repetitive channel or information about it around and around and around until they've convinced themselves that this horrible thing is going to happen. And then they live in a state of fear that it is happening. But that's not really in alignment with evolving the consciousness to, to merge with love, to merge with the unity, to remember that you are divine. 
that is projecting an idea that you are separate from this thing that is after you, that is not part of you, that it's going to get you. But if everything is yourself, then that which you're afraid of that's trying to get you is you. And, and you're just feeding it uh, by giving it energy. And so you can choose to feed it and be afraid of it and prepare for it, but it's just yourself. <laughs> it's so funny, really. Yeah, what I've really noticed, Raphael, is talking to a lot of people is that on a subconscious level, it seems that a lot of people do want everything to kind of fall apart, but they imagine it in this, um, like this apocalypse happening where everything unfolds and there's need for food and water and life is dangerous and there is no government and there is no this and there is no that. Um, and I know that you always talk about things crumbling and falling and, and new things yes. rising. What is, what is the desire that people have it's for things to It's drama. Really they, they're very interested in drama. Mm -hmm. right it's exciting and it's scary and then and then you can get ready for it and, and it's engaging and it's distracting from from often from one's own inner work when we're talking about crumbling we're talking about a, a way of being that has held you in a in a way of perception that it is no longer fitting anymore. It's like you're outgrowing your clothes. It's like you, you're you trying to wear your clothes that you wore in fifth grade and you're a grown man. <laughs> You've yeah. outstretched them, right? And, and you're expanding and you're opening up to something new. You've grown up, you're growing. But that doesn't mean that the growing has to be painful or destructive or filled with drama or that you have to be hungry or starving or that you're going to be manipulated or hurt, uh, right? Or that everything is going to decease. It just means you're growing. What we're talking about in the crumbling is that the, those clothes that you were wearing in fifth grade were perfect. They fit you perfectly and they served you well. And, and, and there was nothing wrong with them. It, it's not to demonize your clothes from being a fifth grader. <laughs> I hate those clothes. No, <laughs> they were the clothes that were appropriate for the size that you were then. But you're outgrowing them. And what's happening is you're all growing so fast that you're that though they have to rip apart. Just like if your body grew and you were still wearing your fifth grade clothes, what would happen to the clothes? They'd start to tear, they would start to crumble, and they disintegrate. And that's what's happening to many structures that are are no longer in alignment with the age that you are from a spiritual perspective. So they have to dissemble themselves. They're falling apart. But you were wearing those fifth grade clothes for so long and you're, you like them and they're the color that you love and they're comfortable and you're familiar with them that you're trying to sew them back up and somehow make them fit. But they don't fit anymore. And, and so when you surrender to the fact that they don't fit, and you might have to be naked for a bit, which is uncomfortable. And that's the shadow and the nakedness because you have no clothes. You're the emperor with no clothes. Then the spirit begins to expand and you can create new clothes. Uh, but it doesn't have to be frightening in the process. It doesn't have to be that the old, the old clothes are out to get you. They just don't fit anymore. So... Uh, another question that came in, and it also relates to a question that we have in here, is if, what do we, so if somebody is afraid um, that of uh, their ability to create their own reality, maybe because they're a little bit um, addicted to the drama, I don't, I don't know, but also, oh, hold on, I lost the other question. How do we keep boundaries up? Oh, no, 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 let's stick with that one. Why are, why are people afraid of creating their own reality? They're afraid of the responsibility of creating their own reality. Because they're afraid of their power. You see, when you fully wake up to the, your power, you have to take complete and full responsibility for everything in your experience because you realize that you're the creator of all of it. And that's scary. 
And so it's easier to say that everything outside of you is creating your experience or that you're a victim or a martyr of it, or there's some outside force out to get you. That's a lot safer than owning your power as the manifester and the creator of your experience, recognizing that you are responsible for everything that is unfolding. That takes a lot of courage. So it can be frightening to recognize your ability to create. And in doing so, sometimes there is a fear of really fully stepping into your light because it can be uncomfortable. You can be vulnerable, you can be ridiculed, you can be judged. It takes courage. And it is in the willingness to step into it and to authentically be true to who you are that you ultimately reach that place uh, that you are all seeking to, to move toward. And it's a process and, it, and, and, and it's okay. There's no judgment if you're not ready for it and if you're comfortable where you are. You see, it, there is no judgment in any place that you are or hierarchy or greater or less than where you are because wherever you are is exactly where you should be. Mm. And so a lot of people deal with their shadow self, right? And, and that could also be a reason somebody would be afraid of their own power because they haven't integrated what they call their shadow self into them. So how do we integrate those parts of ourselves that many of us label as our shadow selves into the light of who we are so that we are more comfortable creating our own reality. Well, well the shadow self can be very deceptive and it, it can, can disguise itself almost as sometimes even something that may be thought of as a good, something good. Often when it comes to power, because the, uh, the shadow, you think of the shadow as the one that's angry or resentful, the one that's uh, speaking up or whatever it may be. But sometimes the shadow is the part that is quiet, is the part is that's submissive, the part is that's over-pleasing, trying to be a good boy or a good girl or fit into to things or please others or worry about what they think or or take that job that they don't want because it, it's, it has... A, uh, status or whatever it may be. It, so the, the shadow can show itself in all these different ways when you're not aligning with what is really authentic and true to your soul, but you're trying to please another. And so owning your power, standing your ground, being courageous uh, and being true to who you are regardless of outside influences and thought patterns is an area in which many people need to move and work through that would be labeled as the shadow self to come out to the other side into what you call the light. And yet the light and the shadow are one in the same. They are not separate. They are, they, they are, the, they are the yin and the yang. They are the black and the white. They are the male and the female. They, they have to come together in order to form creation. They're like the vesica Pisces. And it is the center that brings through the birth of something new. You cannot create or birth something new from the singularity of just the aspect of the light. You have to, you have to bring the polarity of both energies together in order to create the third. And, and so being afraid of the shadow makes it difficult for the creation process to occur. occur. Hmm. Yeah, indeed. So in terms of stepping into our power, um, somebody asked, how does one keep your boundary up? Um, you're talking about Kelly's video about her mother-in-law and putting her foot down and being disrespected. And then also, when should we observe with compassion so no hopes can enter your field, e.g. the vampire video? Oh, well, well, it, it is that there are times uh, that uh, 
well, always when you're being disrespected, you are to stand your ground, put up your boundaries and get clarity and, and begin to create a space between those who are affecting you in a way that is not honoring of you. But if you find yourself, not because you have, you're choosing, but because of circumstances or family or work environment or whatever it may be to temporarily be in the environment by another who you might label as a vampire, it is supportive to be consciously aware of their energetic field ahead of time and to recognize that it comes from the ego and that the ego amplifies the more one is caught in the mind and the chatter of the mind and an unwillingness to be able to be still. And you'll notice that these people, they can't even sit still. They cannot even be present. They cannot fully listen because the mind is so active and is so moving at such a rapid pace that there is no space for any awareness. When there is no space for any awareness, they can only hook into you if you allow them to connect it to the mind chatter within self that is responding from a place of defensiveness or a place of attack or whatever it may be. But if you're in a state of presence in the now, of being conscious uh, and only having an awareness and observation or perception of their experience without allowing them to hook into you, then they, there's nowhere for them to hook. See, they cannot hook into you when you're in a state of the present because they're in mind chatter and mind chatter can only operate and hook into the vibration of other mind chatter. So when you're in their presence, if you're present, then they become chaotic and lost. They don't know what to do with that energy because there is nothing for them to hook to because they cannot hook into you because they're only operating from the mind. And when you're not in the mind and you're in the presence, there it bypasses you. And, and, and they become even more chaotic and frustrated. They'll start to spin completely out of control. But then you can just be there in conscious awareness of the spinning without feeling affected by it because they're not hooking into you because you're in the presence of the now. Now, that is what you is a technique to use when you're in their presence. But ideally, it is best not to be in their presence at all, which is the boundary we were speaking of originally. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, we have somebody wants to know they they have um, been trying to heal from a chronic illness that it's been five years and it's been challenging and they've been thinking about being healthy and strong and they still feel sick and it's hard to walk and to take care of themselves. What is really the way to heal such an illness and brain injuries. This person's only 35 and they got hit super hard with this illness after a series of a lot of a lot of trauma and they're willing to do anything they need to do to heal their body and brain. Uh -huh. Yes, well, yeah. it is trauma that is deeply stored in the cellular makeup and it will require a certain movement for this person. They're going to have to move uh, the kundalini in the body and allow the energy to move and to sway and to begin to find its exit strategy because it's gotten caught and stored. 80% uh, of what they are feeling is an energetic, emotional vibration that has gotten tethered and shut down their systems and chakras. They would respond uh, very well to regular um, energy work and uh, uh, emotional clearing of the trauma. This is all trauma-based. And uh, um, we want to give them a sense of hope that this will heal and that they will overcome this and that they will move through this, but that their attention should be based on the release of the emotion in the body and done through movement. Um, the type of movement here that would help them would be uh, um, a breath, in holding breath and in, in a, a spaces and to moving the energy. Uh, Qigong would be very supportive for them 
done twice a day, very gently, even just sitting in a chair would, would start to allow the flow and the chi to move for them to be able to walk. They can and will heal. They must um, eliminate any thought patterns of anything other than that. Deeply, deeply visualize themselves in complete perfect health and uh, work with those who can support them in moving the energy through the body. It's just stuck chi. All right, Raphael. Thank you so much. That's so helpful. And the last question um, that we have, um, somebody asked, for people who are consciously evolved, when will we split and live in 5D Earth as our reality? Oh, uh -huh. Well, we cannot give you a time for that, but uh, you, it is rapidly approaching. And uh, for many, the, uh, already have arrived in a crystalline state of awareness. And the space between uh, space will continue to widen. So when you have those moments where they're just fleeting second or two, when you're looking up at the blue sky and the puffy clouds, or you're seeing the butterfly flittering past, or you're feeling the ocean waves upon your feet or the breeze on your face or the sun twinkling through the trees, and you think for a moment, perhaps I am in heaven, expand that uh, moment. Um, keep expanding the moments of pure bliss and joy until they begin to fully expand and until your experience becomes that and you step into that next realm of being. So with that, I send to you all of my love and all of my light. Many blessings for tonight and good day. Good day. Hi, everybody. Well, thanks for joining the uh, channeling this evening. <laughs> we had lots of interesting questions. It seemed to have kind of like a whole theme. It was a little different than Raphael's usual uh, light and airy stuff, but it was um, interesting. I'm going to go back and listen to it myself. So thanks for getting on. I'll post this on YouTube. I'll see you guys uh, next Wednesday night if you're around. Um, Starseed One starts September 11th, and that's all I got for tonight. <laughs> all right. I love everybody. Have a wonderful night. Sending much love. Okay, see, how do I unmute everybody? Sure, why not? All right, they can do it now. All right, you're all unmuted. We can all say goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was Love wonderful. You so much. Kelly. Bye. 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 Thank you, Kelly. Bye. Thanks. Thank Have a good you. night. Bye. This is amazing. Bye.